These are my Lego police and SWAT team minifigures. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of them. There's also hardened criminals in here as well. She stole eight billion dollars from an orphanage. Crikey. And then here are my SWAT team units. They come from many different Lego shops. However, they're pretty disorganized. So today we're going to be taking our Lego SWAT team units and equipping them with various weapons, tools, and armors to make every single police SWAT team unit that I can think of out of Lego. There will also be a giveaway later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Hit the like button, subscribe, and let's get into our SWAT. Team. The first unit I want to make is a SWAT chief. Now, this here is Commissioner Gordon from Batman. But I don't want to just copy Commissioner Gordon, but I do like his hat. Yoink! I also really like this dude's uniform. Kind of looks like he's like head detective. A little bit more casual with the bulletproof vest. So let's give him the police chief hat. Actually, I found a better one. Beautiful. And then we don't want him unarmed, although he's not going to be heavily armed. We'll give him a tactical belt. Equip that to his torso. And I've got a nice Glock for him to equip to the belt. And on his butt cheeks, we got a pair of handcuffs because this man likes to get down and dirty in the arresting arena. But honestly, in his day-to-day -day line of work, he is much more likely to hang out at a desk and assign roles for other operators. His fighting days are over, to say the least. Next SWAT member that we need to have on the team is going to be the Hard Breacher. Yeah, we're talking like Sledge from Rainbow Six Siege. Obviously, he's got the ski mask on, and that's going to support this nice heavy weapons man helmet we have for him. On top of that, I wasn't joking. He is like Sledge from Rainbow Six Siege, so we're giving him the Sledge Hammer. And and he can also go ahead and take one of these C4s in case the hammer just isn't quite enough. I don't want him going in without weaponry, so we will go ahead and tuck in a nice little blicky on his side handle right there. So he's good to go. But a heavy breacher definitely needs support when entering any buildings. So we have his sidekick here, the Assaulter. Now the Assaulter has a tear gas mask on, both covering his mouth and eyes, so he can't be stunned. And that's because he comes equipped with flashbangs and gas grenades. That that way when the hard breacher pushes in, he can flash out, stunning the enemies. We'll also go ahead and give him some night vision goggles, just in case it's dark wherever he's entering. And this guy's probably gonna be prone to some close quarters combat. So I have this nice tactical shotgun here, which also actually has a flashlight. So in case his NVGs end up running out of battery, I don't know how NVGs work, he will also have a shotgun with him and a flashlight. And these guys naturally are experts at breaking down doors. So we have a door to a beautiful manor over here. And wow, <laughs> fell down the steps. Stop it. Get some help. We're gonna have our hard breacher up here, basically breaching through the door, and then we'll have our assault soldier eating a grenade in with the sledgehammer boy to stun any enemies and hopefully prevent them from shooting them up while they try and breach and clear here. Now, this is a dangerous job as it is, so we need to try and make it just a smidge less dangerous for them, I think. That's where our SWAT sniper comes into play to provide overwatch. He is much less kitted out because he needs to be a little bit more mobile, so so he can get to vantage points easier. And then we've got some various weapons for him. Firstly, the Barrett 50 Cal here, which does have an extendable bipod. But then we also have this cool L96A1, which you can remove this, take off the little excess plastic. And then there is a little clip in here that you clip this bipod onto. And there's a little bit more factory plastic you can snip right off there. And now is looking perfect. Let's give this boy the L96A1 so that he can do some Overwatch sniping for the guys breaching and clearing. But, you know, he doesn't want to get flanked or anything like that, and he also probably needs someone making the ranges and spotting for him. And that's what my girl Susan is here for. Susan comes with a nice little pair of binox, as well as a radio, in order to communicate with the sniper, as well as headquarters. So these two can pick the nearest castle ramparts, which are obviously very common in America. And position their guns on them and spot from the towers above. Because these boys down here are going to definitely need a little bit of overwatch. Now the SWAT unit's chief at the headquarters obviously is going to need some way to communicate. So that's where the radio man comes in. The radio operator gets to work in a beautiful little cubicle office. And his name is Phil. And Phil gets to wear night vision goggles. Because he wants to feel like he's part of the actual action SWAT team. And on top of that he's balding so there's that 
But Phil knows Windows 10 like nobody's business and is the perfect radio man to talk to the soldiers in the field. But who trains these soldiers in the field? That would be our boy Gus. Gus here used to be a SWAT operator. However, he quickly realized that wasn't for him anymore. And his luscious locks could potentially get clipped in the field and he just couldn't have that. Oh hell no! So he swapped out his operator's uniform for the drill sergeant uniform. And he is an expert from all his years of experience. He knows how to use MP5s, MPXs, pump shotguns, just about any assault rifle, MP7s, and even the elusive flashlight. And sometimes he even has a pistol for his operators in case they need the flashlight pistol combo to be like tunnel rats in the Vietnam War. Imagine this is a tunnel and this is the tunnel rat. Nope. Oh no, he's too fat to fit through the window. <laughs> there we go, that, that kind of works. Any Viet Cong in here? Any trouble, boys? Now, drill sergeants are in charge of training many generations of SWAT team members, but they need to use statistical analysis to see who is the top of the class. That's where Karen police officer comes into play. The Karen here is an expert with her MacBook Pro. Actually, this is a laptop which you can bend so that the minifigures can use it as an actual laptop and it even clicks close into like a briefcase that they can hold. And Karen here uses it to its full potential to basically kick out any bad SWAT team members who don't pass their training courses. But regular SWAT team members are really specially trained, and regular cops who actually have to make the arrests are a dime a dozen. So let's go ahead and assemble our total standard beat cop police force that backs up the SWAT team in times of need, but also handles much more day-to-day -day police work. All right, let's assemble them. And there we have it, boys. Tons and tons of beat cops have assembled here. Uh, 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 we're talking a lot of troopers. And from multiple different eras of Lego, of course. You've got like your very, very OGs over here. And then, you know, the newbies who honestly look just 10 times better. And, you know, everything in between. We're, we're talking like 30 years of Lego police officers right here, which is kind of fun. And honestly, having all these cops here makes me kind of want to try and like make every police officer from every country in the world. I saw during the Olympics that a ton of different countries police officers were in France just as like a little for fun thing that the police community around the world was doing that that could be really cool to do in Lego but these police officers mainly make arrests hand out tickets speed checks etc and sometimes they get in a little bit over their heads that's where the SWAT team comes into play but especially when it comes to to prisoners. Get out of here. When prisoners start to riot, you know you're in some trouble. I mean, look at this dude's face. Would you really want to go face to face with him when he's angry? When he hasn't gotten his... Oh, his friend died. When he hasn't gotten his chicken noodle soup from the mess hall? Well, in those cases, the local guards, like this fella here, definitely don't want to be on the opposite end of these guys. They'd be outnumbered and, quite frankly, pro probably not, uh capable of taking on so many people so angry at once. So then you call in the Riot Control Group. Riot Control is notorious for using SWAT shields like this, but we've used these ones in the past. I've actually got many different Riot Shields that we can utilize. So firstly, we have the ones here which actually have little lights on the front of them, kind of like Blitz from Rainbow Six Siege, so we can flash people and take them down. But then we've also got more simple Riot Shields, like this see-through one. He can see through the entirety of the shield instead of just the little visor part. This one also has the flash bangs on the front. We also have a completely transparent one, and this is actually a foreign riot shield. I Police, I think it's either like German or Italian or something like that. I don't know. Comment down below if you guys know. And this right here is like the real bare bones riot shield. I mean, it's literally just a metal block with a little viewpoint in the front. And then we've got this one here, which is very similar to the first one, just with different printing on the front. So there are a lot of options for riot shields. And there's also a lot of options for what they can hold when they have said riot shields. I mean, you can always use guns. They kind of have to be SMGs or pistols because the riot shields are is so heavy so something like this with the MP with the silencer and the strap would be easy because he can just hang it over his shoulder when he's not needing it but you know a lot of the times you want to use non-lethal so let's get rid of these guns it could be like I'm an evil knight carrying Excalibur and whatnot 
Although that that is also lethal, so that that doesn't really work. There we go, a nice billy club. Although this one is uh, just a Lego bar, which is kind of boring. I'll be honest. Get that out of here. How about this? And hammer. And hammer. <laughs> That's good grammar. Uh, yeah, that might actually kill someone. Battle axe uh, also might kill someone. Shovel, I mean, we're not trying to be the Looney Tunes up in here. Machete, I think we're going backwards. There we go, an actual custom Lego Billy Club. So when your boy comes upon a nice criminal, whatcha can absolutely deck him. We've also got this really cool one right here, which is a retractable nightstick. Uh, sadly, it doesn't actually retract. It would be so cool if someone made an actual retractable nightstick in Lego, uh, but this one still looks really awesome. Again, you got a prisoner acting a fool. Whitcha! You just take him down. Oh, we broke his ride shield. <laughs> okay, these things are not indestructible, apparently. I think that kind of defeats their purpose. But then, what about when things become a little bit too risky for our police officers? Well, in those cases, we bring in the police doggos. They're so freaking cute. And with them, the much lamer SWAT canine unit handlers. Man's best friend can take out some criminals, baby. But sometimes these police doggos need a little bit of help, like when they need to breach through things like barbed wire. The dog's smart enough to know that this razor sharp wire isn't very conducive for puppers. That's when you bring in the expendable guy, the guy who can walk up to the barbed wire with wire cutters and snip them while in a police shootout. So, you know, if he dies, it's no big deal, and then the dog can go through. Sometimes it's good if he brings a crowbar as well to help him out. And, you know, if this guy just so happens to get injured on the job, that's when the medics come into play. And by the look of this guy's face, uh, yeah, this guy got horribly injured. So, uh, just, just go ahead and give this man a little bit of morphine and hope that he recovers. It's looking bad. He no longer has a face. Now, sometimes our enemies end up planting bombs. And while Batman, whatcha? Might come in and stop those thugs. It was Christmas time. That, that's why he's in his festive apparel. Don't mind him. He needs to go give his present to the boy wonder. The bombs are sometimes still active. That's when you get the EOD boy in here. And I've actually shown off this guy in a few previous videos. And I just really like him. He's so cool. He's got such great plated armor. Different little satchel pockets for his like wire clippers and stuff like that on his side. Oh, it's just one of my favorite police minifigures. So, you know, he can go ahead and make sure that this thing doesn't go boom. Sometimes things just go boom anyway, and quite frankly, you need to then bring in the coroner, who, uh, yeah, just does a little bit of body removal, do, 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 do. and a beat cop who doesn't understand what a dead person is, handcuffs the dead prisoner, drags him off by a chain, mounts his noble police horse, and then drags the prisoner through the streets. Unusual treatment doesn't apply when it's a dead body. Actually, I think it does. I think this guy's getting sued and he's losing his badge, and quite honestly, rightfully so. Police commissioner probably should have known this was a weirdo from the start, but hey, no one said he was good at his job. He's just a man who has a really important job and probably should be good at his job. Now, sometimes the cops cannot take their horsies, so they get a horsey with an engine. <laughs> AKA a motorcycle, I guess you could call it. And uh, we've got motorcycle cops. That's right, baby. These guys just motor around town on their little mopeds. But I think we can trick it out by putting a Barrett 50 cal on one side of the wheels <laughs> and then a submachine gun on the other side. So he's basically just like a oh, rolling death machine, baby. Yes, sir. Beautiful, baby. Skirt. Wow, that actually rolled pretty well. Then, of course, we're going to want to have some specialized anti chemical weaponry SWAT troopers. So let's rip off his hat. Give the this boy a nice filtration system in case he comes upon any mysterious sussy baka chemicals and equip this fella with a nice little vector submachine gun for close quarters combat because his main duty is to protect his hazmat friend here who is on the lookout for any poisonous chemicals and stuff like that and when the SWAT team is inevitably fooled by it just being a puddle of mysterious goopy vomit liquid then they have to call in the ultimate SWAT unit of them all the elite special operation Operations janitorial staff. 
keeping the city clean since 1992 when the great vomit storm hit. Don't ask what that was. Either way, fellas, we have covered so many SWAT units in this video, and I think we've done a bang up job of keeping this city safe. And this might be my favorite SWAT unit here with the SWAT ballistic helmet. It's just so cool. So let's go ahead and get into today's giveaway. I'm going to be giving away a World War II Lego Custom German Machine Gun Trooper. Yes, Hans gets a Flammenwerfer or the MG42, whatever works. All you gotta do is hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below if you would like to see a part two to the SWAT team video Where we can build even more cool SWAT units and I'll get some more custom SWAT equipment and maybe some vehicles and stuff like that in a future video too I think that could be really cool and let me know what vehicles you'd want to see or what type of SWAT gear or SWAT team members you would like to see. More snipers, more assault troopers, more ride shields, etc, etc. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.